Hey, fall is up on us and the weather is cooling off. We got a dish that's going to warm your heart and your soul and take you down memory lane. What is it? Cowboy goulash. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by under the barn. My name is Cowboy Kent Rollins, and what are we talking about doing? Some cowboy cooking. Welcome to another episode. What do we do here? We take the food from our fire, comfort food, classic food, and transfer it right in there to your kitchen. All it's got to do is jump through the TV or off the computer screen. And if you're a new viewer, hey, we want to treat you all like family because we are one great big family here. So go ahead up there and hit the dingy dong bell and hit that subscribe button because we don't want you to miss out on anything we got going on. And I know y'all are excited to see this as we are, but I don't think you're as excited as the Big and the Duke because they are super excited here on a great warm day outside. They are just sunning. Now we're talking about this goulash. It originated in Hungary. Hungarian style of cooking. Now back in the ninth century these shepherds would take this and they would stew it down make more like a beef stew. But today when people make it Hungarian style they use like a chuck eye steak something like that. You go ahead and cube it like you would a stew meat and then you cook that down with a good rich broth and then you would pour it over the noodles. But the American style? Hey and this stuff was probably served at more grade school cafeterias than any place ever known anything. My mother always fixed it too. She not only called it goulash, she'd call it slamgulian. And that's another title for it back in the old days because they would just take meat, add a little of that macaroni to it, and you could make a meal that would stretch it out and go further. So, well, let's get started on this goulash. And we're going to start with what? Two pounds of ground beef. Now, I like to use 80-20, and we got us a 12-inch Dutch oven over here preheating, getting a little hot because I want to pour that stuff in there and let that sizzling action to begin. This is two pounds, and we're just going to crumble it up here in this Dutch oven. Get it to browning. Just make sure you got it chunked up well. Once that goes to browning just a little, and you can see it has reached that point, I have one large yellow onion, and I'm talking large, diced up, because I want them onions to get down in there with that ground beef and get us some good caramelizing going on, and we'll brown the onions up really well. So we're going to add about a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Now. I didn't know this till I got to looking, but there's all kinds of smoked paprika. There is the Hungarian style, there is the Spanish style, and I have what? The style they had at our store, so I don't know what brand that is. About one and a half tablespoons of Red River Ranch Original. What you say? As Billy Blair would say, you ain't got none of this. Well, Shannon will tell you where you can get some. One and a half tablespoon. Now let's go ahead and give that a stir. So we can get that to incorporating, we're going to take three garlic cloves. I don't want none of your little bitty ones. Uh -uh. I want three big honking garlic cloves, and that's what these are. Minced, and that means minced right there. That's a fancy tool there. Uh-huh. First time you busted that out. So we're just going to continue to get all that incorporated well and stir it up good till that meat gets there and gets good and brown and mm, there's a lot of flavor coming out of there and it be looking some of that delicious it is. Well we done got the meat browned up we have and there's no grease or fat to drain off this. So if you was to have to have some of that you can tilt this over to one side get your spoon spoon that out of there but hey. We are in good shape, good to go, things are ready. So let's go to adding the rest of this stuff to it. What do we got here? Stewed tomatoes, a whole can. Now you can see as them come out of there, they in pretty big pieces. I like to go ahead and just sort of chop them up here a little because they will get softer and do that. So after that, tomato paste. And make sure you get it all in there. This is gonna give it some really good flavor and a little thickness to go with it. A can of Rotel. Now what that is, is green chilies, a little bit of onion, and some tomatoes all chopped up in there real fine. Go ahead and dump that in there. We're gonna add a cup of water. Oh, I'm sorry folks, that's a half a cup, not a cup, because it is a cup of chicken broth. Some soy sauce. About two tablespoons. My mother used to use Worcestershire on occasion, 
we got to putting some soy sauce in it that's why we don't really salt and pepper this now because this is going to have some sodium in it so we'll salt and pepper to taste later on give that a stir i need you to put in two bay leaves either one of them cans of hatch green chilies that is diced or this fresh roasted one that we had here and diced it up ourselves. we're going to let it come back to a little bit of a bowl turn it down to a simmer Cover it and let it cook for about 20 minutes so we can blend all them flavors together. You know, we fixed a lot of dishes on ranches, but probably goulash was probably one of the first meals I always cooked for a noon meal after we got started. Hey, y'all are always asking, what would you pair this with? Well, I would have maybe fixed some of them oven roasted potatoes that we have, and we have a video for them, channel have you a link, but something that it goes really well with, mm, some of that hot water cornbread, just poured right on top of there. I probably fixed this more in the fall on some of them old remote camps that was in, especially down there in the Paladura Canyon when it would be maybe blowing a little snow in down there. And I knew them boys had been out there a shivering a horseback, so I'd think, you know, I need to warm them fellers up at noon. So I'd fix this goulash. I maybe spice it up even a little more with three or four extra jalapenos to give them some heat. But them cowboys would come in there, take the lid off that old pot and dip down in there, smother it just over great big pieces of big old cornbread. And it just warmed their soul and warmed their heart. I could always tell because they went back for more than one plate. Now this is really classic chuck wagon cooking right here when I was on a ranch because when I'm out there three to five weeks long, me and, me and Shan, we can't be taking a lot of stuff that we have to refrigerate. Sure, in the fall and the winter, you may not need it, but we're always taking a lot of canned goods. But my mother taught me so many years ago how to transform them canned goods into tasting just like this, fresh. But folks, that's why we really come out to with our first cookbook, A Taste of Cowboy, because it was about how we cooked on the wagon, how we could take them canned goods and transform them into something else where you didn't ever think this canned again. Now, if you missed it on our last episode, which was what? Somebody raised the hand out there in the back. Yep, you in the back row. It was on the pork belly, smoked pork belly. Mm, it was good, but we had really big, exciting news. What was it? Our new cookbook is going to come out March 17th, but you can pre-order that book right now. This cookbook is all about some really fresh stuff out of the garden, a whole lot more grilling. Shan's great pictures and my stories all blended together. We've been on about 20 minutes, we have, and we stirred it once in between there. Just keep it on a low simmer, and we done measured us out what? Two cupfuls of them large elbow macaronis. So let's just dump them in there. Get it stirred up, and we're going to cook this for about another 15 to 20 minutes till everything gets tender. Now, you don't want to overcook this and get it mushy, and you don't want to be like Al who drove through the hailstorm. What happened? It was al dente. We want it to be just right. So we're going to cover it again, and that is hot, let me tell you for sure. We'll let her go about 10, give it one more stir. Cover it back up, and we'll check it about 15 minutes in, see where we're at. It's a happy meal and it didn't come in a sack. While I'm thinking about it, let me go ahead and get this bay leaf that has surfaced right up here at the top and get him out of there. So let's dip us some of this out of there and let it cool a bit. And you can see we cooked it out to where it's just right. I didn't want a whole lot of juice and broth to be left in there. So, whew, and that little bowl is hot. So we're just gonna set it right here 
So while we're letting this cool, let's talk about this cast iron. Now, we had this at a simmer, and I be hearing folks telling me all the time, you're not supposed to cook acidic food in cast iron. And tomatoes, they got some acid in them, they do. And when it's sitting there simmering, sure, it could eat on your cast iron. This is a well-seasoned piece of cast iron. I don't recommend you do this in a piece of iron that you've owned three weeks or four weeks. You got to build this seasoning up. That's why you clean it well every time. You get it good and dry, and then you re-season every trip. Not once a week, not twice a week. Every time you use that skillet or that Dutch oven, you re-season because then you're building that shield up, that seasoning up that you're not going to eat away at it. But make sure when you get through cooking something like this, whether it be tomato-based, fruit-based, barbecue sauce, something like that, you clean that really well with good hot water. You dry it well. You re-season it every trip. All about, hey, we got some great things coming up. You know, won't be long till it's Christmas. We're going to try to help you out with a bunch of great gift ideals, but also we got some new products that's coming out. So you want to be sure you keep up with us because we got some great things we're bringing y'all away. I think this is cooled off enough. And we might can stir this up here and have us a bite. Now, first, I want to tell you about them little macaronis, if you can see them. They're not mushy, but they hold their shape really well. Cook just right, they are. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, that transforms me back to my childhood. To so many days in my mother's kitchen when she had put this on the table but also in the middle of them old desolate camps when I was cooking for cowboys on ranches just to see the smile on their face when they got a plate of this. When you get the seasonings that are all blended well together, you don't think about this being a canned product of any kind that we used in here. The smoked paprika, the Red River Ranch original, the big honking garlic cloves, mm, it just sort of sets the stage for all this to come together. Now, I didn't have to salt and pepper this any at the end. It is what I would call just right to eat, but hey, Susan, Susan. Well, who is Susan, Shan? Season to your sooty. I like to not got that out. That's pretty hard for me. I'm going to have one more bite. Mm, 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 mm. It's going to make you break down and do what? The bended macaroni elbow dance. Mm, mm. And then mm. you might be fleet of foot. Jump back up. Your elbows might be like this for the rest of your life. Just as always, folks, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and veterans who have kept that old flag flying. Wherever me and Shan at, we're going to have old glory waving somewhere. You don't have to look for it. We'll make sure you see it. We want to thank you all for the great service that you're doing to keep our country free and safe. Be sure that you share, like, and subscribe, because I don't want you to miss nothing. And don't forget what? Faith, family, and the feast. It's all about bringing family together, eating good classic food, and having a good time. The Lord has blessed us, so let's share it with everybody. Let's do. I hope y'all enjoyed this, and from our hearts to your hearts, God bless you, one and all, and I'll see you down the goulash trail.